Kin folk, it's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. It's always college football related, sports related. We have a good time today. I want to run through a few topics. I want to talk about college football scheduling, non-conference scheduling, how Central Arkansas is going barnstorming. I want to talk about some sleepers that can make the college football playoff and how like last year was kind of an aberration because we're used to at least one sleeper making the college football playoff. And I want to talk about, well, we might get into that other topic. See how much time we got. But first, I want to start with Kamar Wheaton, right? Who dropped his top three at 12.30 in the morning after saying earlier in the day that he was going to drop a top two. I stayed up like you stayed up, and then I went to bed, and I woke up this morning to the news that Oklahoma, Alabama, and LSU had made the five-star running backs top three, right? So let's start with LSU. The defending national champs have Ty Davis Price on the roster along with John Emery and Chris Curry, but they also picked up a 2021 four-star recruit in Corey Kiner, who has drawn comparisons to guys like Clyde edwards Lair and Kevin Falk's been doing a hell of a job recruiting at that running back coach position, and that's what you really need at that position. You need a dynamic recruiter, which gets me into DeMarco Murray. We'll get there in a little bit. But I think that right now, it's about what can you show Kamar Wheaton that he hasn't seen already. And already having a running back in the boat is not necessarily going to push him away. I mean, running backs go in twos or even threes sometimes all over the country every year. It's about what are your chances of playing big time college football? What are your chances of winning championships? And how often do you put guys at his position into the first round of the NFL draft to which, yeah, LSU will be like, We'll show you these receipts, homie, because we just put, yeah, Clyde edwards Alaire into the first round of the NFL draft to the defending Super Bowl champs, that be the Kansas City Chiefs, and already we're hearing great things about CEH, and I will never forget Clyde edwards Alaire's 2019 season because it was really great for a running back of his size to show his versatility in that year is no small thing, right? I'd also add in there that... The way that he played against Oklahoma in the Peach Bowl really caught my attention because we're dealing with reports leading into that week about him being on crutches and him being a scratch for the Peach Bowl. And then there he goes, surprising the hell out of all of us and surprising the hell out of Justin Broyles when he was running him over. Also add to that, he had a great offensive line to play in front of. They won the Joe Moore Award, which is awarded to the best offensive line in college football. And there were all sorts of weapons around to help bolster things that they wanted to do, not to mention Heisman Trophy winning quarterback in Joe Burrow and a future number one overall draft pick. You already know that LSU's 2021 class is among the top 10. It has a chance to finish in the top five. They've got an outstanding quarterback commit and Garrett Nussmeyer, they got outstanding wide receiver play, JoJo Earl choosing to join up at LSU. They've also got outstanding defensive players committed to that class, led by Rajon Davis. I think, yeah, it's perfectly within view to think of LSU as a true contender on this, right? But same thing could be said about Alabama. And once again, we see Alabama and LSU going head up over players that they are going to have to play against or see in their division each and every year. Alabama added Trey Sanders last year, or excuse me, year before last. He blew out his ACL in preseason camp. I can't wait to see him play. He was really, really, really good in high school. But behind Najee Harris, he'll probably get a few opportunities at the spell back. And then, of course, in the 2020 class, a two-and-a-half-year commit in Jason McClellan flipped to Alabama at the last minute from Oklahoma, early signing period. And now he's in the backfield is there there as well. And you look at Alabama's 2021 recruiting, it would be perfectly within view to think of Kamar Wheaton as a dude that could end up there because all Nick Saban has done is find your favorite recruit and make him his favorite recruit, right? We've seen this basically since May. In April, Alabama ranks number 55 in the rankings. And now in mid-August, they're number two, adding J.C. Latham, adding Tommy Brockermeyer, the James Brockermeyer, Kendrick Blackshire, and on it goes. Dallas Turner, Ja'Cory Brooks, Jai Hall, 
They got their quarterback in Jalen Milrow, even after losing Drake May in a flip commitment in February to North Carolina. The idea of having Jalen Milrow and Kamara Wheaton and Ajay Hall and Ja'Cory Brooks all with J.C. Latham over here, Tommy Brockermeyer over here, James Brockermeyer in the middle, intoxicating going along with guys like Terrence Ferguson. The 2021 class at Alabama is on par with the 2021 class at Ohio State. And if you could add another five-star in the likes of Kamar Wheaton, not only do you end up with an outstanding tailback or the best tailback to many in this class, but you add another five-star that can help you take over that number one spot from Ohio State. They're right there. And the addition of a Kamar Wheaton would be a big deal. But I expect Kamar to take his recruiting all the way to signing period if indeed we get to have an early signing period. And then lastly, we got to talk about Oklahoma. Oklahoma struck out on getting the tailbacks that they wanted in 2020. Getting Seth McGowan is not a small thing coming out of Poteet. And if you've been watching OU's social media presence on Twitter, you can see that he is shaking dudes. And that was not necessarily a thing that was in his repertoire or a thing that we talked a lot about that was in his repertoire because he's such a big, strong muscle back. Like he looks more like a Samaj P. Ryan for me but he runs like a Rodney Anderson. And at Oklahoma, that's always going to be really awesome to see. But more than that, right, because Jace McClellan ended up flipping to Alabama, you get to sell Kamar Wheaton on being the only tailback that you're going to take in this 2021 class. And this spot has been circled for him since signing DeMarco Murray as the running backs coach in February, January, February. And that's also huge, right? Because DeMarco Murray was one of the best NFL tailbacks of the last 10 years, you know, offensive player of the year, pro bowler, perennial. And of course, he's a rising star in this profession. And who wouldn't want to play for a dude like that? You're hoping that the way that Tony Grimes looked at Dre Bly at UNC for his career is the way that Kamar Wheaton will look at DeMarco Murray for his career and perhaps want to play for him and with him. But now you also get to take a look at Oklahoma's depth chart and say Ramondre Stevenson, whether or not he's playing this year or not, this is his final year at Oklahoma, right? T.J. Pledger is going to be going into his last year, we think, at Oklahoma next year. Not, not this year, next year. And then, of course, there's Marcus Major and Seth McGowan. So you'd get plenty of opportunities to get carries. And to look at Wheaton is to see a big play threat every single time he touches the football, Okay. 10.6 100-meter speed at Centennial in Garland, Texas, Lake Centennial. The thing that I really think is interesting about him is that he gears down when he's changing direction. Maybe that is going to change. He gets a little bounce happy, kind of like Trey Sermon or Le'Veon Bell, just wanting to be too patient or not necessarily make a decision and go, but catches the ball tremendously well out of the backfield and has that breakaway speed that you love to see. I could just as easily see him slotting in and playing the same sort of role that Joe Mixon played for Oklahoma, the way that Rodney Anderson played the last five, six games of the 2017 season could be the same thing that we're talking about for Kamara Wheaton. 